Okay, so now the session is being recorded for later. Um, welcome to my webinar, Blackboard Learn, using assessments in the Grade Center. And today we're going to cover four objectives. We're just going to go over simple tools in Blackboard to create assessments. That'll be primarily the assignment and test tool. I'll go over how you can collect student um, assessments online through these tools, how to provide feedback to students, and then how to um, maintain an organized gradebook. Okay, so the first thing we'll cover is creating assignments. And for those of you who are new to using Blackboard, um, there is an assignment tool in Blackboard that's generally referred to as a dynamic assignment in the training courses. And this is the tool that you can use to create online assignments for students to submit their work to you um, digital, digitally. So they could be submitting a Word document, uh, a link to a Google document or a Google Slides presentation, or a link to a video. So this is sort of a, an all-purpose assignment submission tool. Okay. And I'll go over how to begin. Um, let me share my screen. We'll just take a moment here. Now you might get a little disoriented as I switch over, but that's okay. So first things first, access a course. So just take give me a moment here and I will go to my example course. And every course in Blackboard has a section where you can use these tools. So here's an example course, and I'm going to create an assignment in my weekly lessons area. Um, first, um, I'm going to create a, a weekly folder to organize all this. So I'm going to call this week one, and this is just going to be a folder for organizing that unit of content for that week. So I'm going to go into my week one folder, and I have my tools here for building content and assessments. And in my assessments drop down menu, I'm going to choose assignment. And I'll give this a simple name. I'll call this um, let's say that I have an assignment where I want students to create a mess uh, fill out a mess a lesson map template. Okay. And so I gave it a name, and then I will give this some instructions. So you can go into great depth here if you wanted to, um, to provide transparency and clarity in the instructions. But for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to keep this simple and type some general instructions for the student. You could outline what it is that they need to do here, provide links and other documents through the instructions and the assignment files area. So let's say that I want to attach a file to this for the students to complete. I can just click on Browse Local Files, and I'm going to find a file that I want them to complete for me and I have a Word document here called Lesson Map Template. I'll select it and click Open and that attaches that file to this assignment. Okay and then the other piece if you have due dates that you want to associate with the assignment so uh, students can keep track of this on uh, the My Grades page or on their course calendar. You can enable a due date by checking the checkbox and then setting Let's say I want this to be um, due on Friday the 5th at end of day. Okay, so this, this tells Blackboard this assignment is due on this date and time. Now, if this assignment is available after this due date and students submit, their work will get marked as late. And then you can decide as the instructor how you want to handle late submissions. Okay, now under grading, this is where you can assign points possible. So let's say that I want to make this worth 10 points. And there's additional tools here to customize how you want this uh, assessment or this assignment to uh, be available to students. So if you go to Submission Details, this is where Blackboard knows if this is an individual submission where the student can only submit once, or if this is going to be 
a submission that will be handled by a group of students or if this is going to be a portfolio type of assignment. But for in general, dynamic assignments are usually set as an individual submission. And this is where you can assign how many attempts the student will have at submitting this assignment. You could have this set to single attempt or you could choose multiple attempts and assign a number. So if you wanted to allow students to submit two times, like maybe give them the benefit of the doubt, they could submit once and if they submit the wrong thing or need to make an edit, they could come back and submit another time. Blackboard will keep a history of those submissions. They won't overwrite each other. Okay, and then this is where you can tell Blackboard how you want to handle scoring, uh, if, especially if you're using multiple attempts, you can tell Black, the col column in the Blackboard Grade Center that the score to display could be the last graded attempt, the highest grade, the lowest grade, the first graded attempt, or an average. Okay, for most people they just leave the last graded attempt selected. And then if you wanted to scan the student submission with plagiarism checking tools for originality, this is where you can enable those features. So if I wanted to scan the student's work against a known database of uh, written works and um, content on the internet and other student submissions that have been submitted, this is where I can enable that. So if I check submissions for plagiarism using SafeAssign, Okay, and then if I want to show students their results, I can check that. And then if I want to exclude the submissions from the databases, if this is going to be a draft paper that will later be evaluated uh, through another submission, I'll want to make sure I'm excluding this particular submission from the Safe Assigned databases. That way, if they submit the paper later, it's not going to be a false match against itself. Okay. Great. And then availability. So you'll want to make sure that the assignment is available to students. Now you can schedule this assignment to be available at a later date using the availability uh, date and time tools down here if you wanted to. But for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to leave this as is. And then once I'm done creating this assignment, I will click submit. And that will create the assignment within my content area here. Okay, so basically um, when the student comes along, they can just click on this link and they just have to complete this form. Oops, let me refresh the page. We're having a problem with the content editor. Uh-oh, what was that? Are we okay here? Is everybody still connected? We're, we're connected. Okay. Let me refresh, refresh my browser here. Uh oh, what is this about? Am I having an internet problem? Okay. Okay, let me, I, I'm going to have to shut my browser down for a moment and return. Um, just hang tight, okay? Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's try this again. All right, I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to go back to my course. Okay, so we were talking about the assignment tool. So here is that assignment that I've just created and students will come along and click on that link and they'll just have to fill out a simple form here to submit their work. And I'll get to that in a moment when I talk about student preview mode to know how the, the submission process works, okay? But for now, it's enough to know that that assignment is now created and it's a part of my course and there will be a corresponding column in the course's grade center like so, lesson map template assignment. Okay, so um, the next tool that I want to talk about, let me just go out of screen share mode and share my slides again. is the test tool. So this is a tool that 
present in all courses where you can create online tests for students to complete. And creating tests is usually a two-step process. First you create the test in your course's control panel, and then you make the test available within a content area. Now if you're concerned about creating tests that are uh, mobile compatible, if your students don't really have access to laptops or desktops and they're trying to take tests through mobile devices, there are certain design precautions you can take to make sure that that's an easy process for them. And so the, the supported question types for the Blackboard app that students use are true-false, multiple choice, either or, short answer, and essay. And some uh, test settings that are, are best supported by the Blackboard mobile app um, on the test options page, all at once test question presentation. You can have the timer turned on. Um, and you can also randomize the question order. So students will have a different arrangement of questions from each other. Okay, are there any questions so far about what I covered? I'll take silence as a no. And I will go ahead and demonstrate creating a test. Let me just go back, okay. Can everyone see Blackboard now? Okay, good. All right, so I'm going to go to Course Tools in my Course Control Panel, and then go to Test Service and Pools, go to Tests, and on this test screen, I'm going to build a test, and I'll just call this Test 1. You can add instructions and a description if you want to. I'm just going to go ahead and click Submit. And this is the test canvas where I can start building my test. So I'm going to go to create question and let's say that I want to build a true false question. I'm going to just fill out the form. So you don't have to put a question title in, that's optional. The required parts are starred with this little orange star. So in the question text field here, I can um, type a question. So let's say true or false, red is a primary color. Okay, so that's my question text and now I scroll down to answers and indicate what the right answer is. Red is a primary color so I will keep that set as true. And under feedback, this is where you can provide some uh, feedback to the student. You can just add something affirmative, affirmative here, or you could go into detail to explain why that answer is correct. Same thing um, for incorrect. So I'm going to give them some additional feedback and direction. So I'm going to tell them this answer is not correct and where they can go in their readings to find the right answer. Now you can go into further detail and explain why what they chose was an incorrect answer by adding more text to the, the incorrect response feedback box. Okay. Now once I'm done building the question, I can either click submit or if I want to create another true false question, I can click submit and create another. And that's sort of a nice workflow that can help me um, build out my test. But for now, I'll click on submit just to post that question to the page. And note when you have a new question that you'll see a preview of it. You'll see the, the text, the answer options, what the right answer is, the feedback. And also note that Blackboard has assigned it a point value of 10 points. You can click on that little point bubble to assign it a point value that you want. Um, let's say that I only wanted this to be worth one point. I can type in one and submit, and that will make that question now worth one point. So I'll create another question. Let's say I want to create a multiple choice question. Okay, let's say in this question, let's just say I want them to select the secondary color from this set of options. Okay, I want them to identify what the secondary color is. So let's say um, under, actually first let me go to, uh, look at options. So options where you can tell Blackboard how to number and orient your questions. So 
let's say that I want to give this A, B, and C type of labeling. I can also tell Blackboard I want the answers to be scrambled for each student so that my letter A is going to be different from Pam's letter A. So that's sort of a, a test design anti-cheating mechanism that you can use to, to discourage um, collaboration and cheating by scrambling, scrambling around the, the letter numbering. So under answers, this is where I can indicate how many answers will be possible. By default, you get four. You do have the option to go all the way up to 100, but I strongly advise against that. Usually in best practices in instructional design, um, it's best to give between five and seven maximum answer responses. That's, that's a, as much as the human mind can process at one time. Okay. So, under uh, answers, I can indicate what the correct answer is and what the, in, the um, other op options are. So, let's say that I want to put in the wrong answer here. I'll make the second answer what the correct answer is. I will choose orange as my answer. Answer three will be yellow. Answer four will be pink. Okay. So, in this multiple choice question, the student will have to pick the correct response from a, a set of options. And I've told Blackboard what the correct response is by clicking on the radio button for answer two. Orange is a secondary color. Okay, and then just like how I did for true false, I can put feedback in. So this is where you can provide some guidance to students in your, your feedback responses. Okay, so that's a true-false and a multiple choice. Okay, and then I'll cover one other question type here. Let's say that I want to do, um, let's say I'll do an essay. So this is going to be a little different from the other question types you've seen. The true, false, and multiple choice questions, those are questions where Blackboard knows what the correct answer is. Those are objective questions. Now here is an essay. Blackboard doesn't really know how to score what the student will write because they're going to be writing a, an original response to something. Okay, so here is the question I'm writing for the essay question. I'm asking students to compose an original response describing the difference between a warm color scheme and a cool color scheme. And to give an example. Okay, and then you can provide an example of what a correct answer could look like in the answer box here. Okay, so you're, get, you're providing some feedback to the student that indicates what a correct response could look like, but there could be some wild va variation between what students compose in their answer. Okay, and so I've finished that. I'll click Submit, and that will add the question to my test canvas, like so. Okay. And um, if I want to reassign the point values to all these questions all at once, there's a nice tool here. I can click Select All on the page, type in a point value, and let's say that I want each of these questions to be worth five points. I could type that in the points box, click Update, and that's going to make all of these questions worth five points. Okay, that was part one of the process you use to create a test. Now I'm going to deploy the test. So here's part two. So now that I have my test built, 
I'm going to go to weekly lessons and I'm going to go to my folder where I'm organizing all my related content and under my assessments drop down I'll go to test I'll select test one click submit and this is the test options for the, the, the test so I could provide some general instructions here Okay, and under test availability, I'll want to make sure that I make this test available to students. Now, if I wanted to allow students multiple attempts to take this test, I can select the multiple attempts box and either allow unlimited attempts or define a certain number of attempts. And this is useful for a couple reasons. One, um, if a student has a technical problem and in the, the submission process, if you give them a certain number of attempts, they can come back and submit another try. Or if you're using your tests more as a learning tool for formative assessment to guide learning, and you have a lot of different questions that could show up in the test, this is a useful setting to allow uh, practice with the test to, to check their learning. So the test serves not really as a summative assessment, but more of a formative assessment where students are just using it as a knowledge check. Um, now, force complete. I don't really recommend using force complete on tests because what this does is it locks a student into the test into one sitting. And if they have a technical problem where they lose internet connectivity or power outage or some other issue with their computer, the test basically will submit itself. That will be it for them. They won't be able to come back and resume the test where they left off. And they'll have to come to the instructor for um, an accommodation. So the instructor would have to either delete the previous attempt or grant an additional attempt. Okay. So for those reasons, I kind of recommend not enabling force complete because it requires the instructor to take actions after the fact. So uh, you can enable timing on the test, meaning this test, once the student begins the test, will be open for a certain amount of time. Um, so let's say that I want this test to be open for 30 minutes and automatically submit itself at the 30 minute mark. Okay, that's how I can set that up. And then if I wanted to schedule the availability of this test, I can choose my display after and until functions and assign calendar, calendar dates and times through the picking tools. Okay, now if a student has an accommodation where they need additional time, this is where you can set that up under test availability exceptions. If you click add user or group, this is where you can pick a student and then assign additional time for them based on certain settings here. So let's say all the other students will get two attempts, but I'm going to allow this student three attempts. All the other students get 30 minutes, but this student is going to get double that, we'll get 60 minutes. And let's say that I'm going to take auto submit off for this particular student. So they're going to be able to go over the 60 minute limit if they need more time. Or maybe I'll schedule the availability of this test to be open even longer for this particular student. Let's like maybe they need an additional day or maybe they need access to the test earlier than everyone else. This is where you can set the availability rules for that particular student. Okay. All right. And then the last piece of the test options I'll cover is the uh, test results and feedback. Now, by default, after submission, students will see the score they have earned on the test. Um, if you want to show them what they submitted and what was correct, you can enable those options. Um, but bear in mind, it will show the student uh, a list of all the questions that were, were on the test. And if you don't want students to see any of that, I recommend taking out everything here. But just for demonstration purposes, I'll keep, I'll keep submitted selected. I will indicate that I want to show the feedback that I've got associated with my questions. And I'll mark the students' questions with a check mark if they're right or wrong. Okay. And so I'll click Submit here. And that will create the test. All right. So just how, like, like how there was an assignment, there's a test here. Okay. So... Now that I've created these tests, you may have a question, how do I know what the student will experience? How do I know if everything is set up correctly the way I expect? What you can do is use your student preview mode icon here. 
at the top of the page. See how there's this little eyeball with a little green dot in the middle? If you click that, that toggles you into student preview mode and you will see your course exactly how students will experience it. Are we good so far? Yes. Okay, good. So if there's ever a question of is my test available, is it showing up to students, definitely take advantage of your student preview mode because this will answer that question for you. And you can go in and actually take the tests with your, your student preview user account. So here is my preview user. I'm going to start accessing the assignments. So I'm going to go to my week one and let's say that I want to um, complete this assignment. So I'm going to download that template and I will just op see how it opened in Word. And I'll just put my name here. So let's say that's it. I just completed my assignment. And I'll just change the color here so I can keep track of that. I'm going to save this on my computer's desktop like so. Okay, so I, com I created my document in Word and now in Blackboard I'm going to click on the link to that assignment here at the top where I see the form and what I can do is I can, now that I have a completed document, I'm going to attach it to this assignment so I could see that it's attached here and then I can just click Submit and that's going to get sent to the course's grade center for the instructor to review. And here's my confirmation that this has been successful at the top of the page. I get this purple banner and my tracking number at the top. And actually Blackboard will send an automated uh, notification to the student confirming that this assignment has been submitted as well. On the page, the assignment will preview for the student to see that this is the document and this is exactly what the instructor will see when they go into their, their grading screen as well. Okay, so that was the assignment submission and now I will go over how the student takes the test. So the student will see that there is a test available here. They'll click on the link to the test. They'll click begin and They'll see the information at the top telling them about the test, all the things they need to know. Um, if it's a time test, they'll see the timer here and it's ticking down the seconds that are available. The status bar will tell them if they have answered questions. So right now these are in white. As I begin answering questions, those will fill in with a dark color. Okay, so here's question one, true or false, red is a primary color, I'll select true. And Blackboard will try to automatically save that. See how that saved button just turned dark with a little green check mark? And my status indicator has filled in that first bubble. So it detected my answer and saved it. Okay, now here's my question two. Let's say that I will choose orange. And remember how I scrambled the order of those questions or those answers? So Blackboard has put that the correct answer at the very bottom of the list, okay? And then here is question three, the essay. So I will put an example. Okay, so here's question three, and because this is an essay, this is an open response type of question where the student will compose an original response using the tools in the text editor. When the student is all done, they can click the save and submit button at the bottom right corner. This is essential that they do that. That will tell Blackboard this response has been um, submitted and is ready for grading. So I'll go ahead and click OK. The student will get this confirmation if they are successful, if the test is submitted. Okay, and they'll also get an email confirmation that the test has been submitted to. 
All right, so this is the screen the student sees once they have submitted the test based off of the instructor's settings. And I can see what the correct answer is here. I select answer and I got my correct feedback. I can see that I had the little green check mark because that is a correct question or correctly answered question. And I can see the score I have earned. But notice how question three is an essay question and it's marked with needs grading. That means the instructor has to go in and evaluate what the student wrote and assign a score. So that's why you're seeing the little exclamation point here in the needs grading indicator. So while I'm in student preview mode, I just want to highlight the purpose of the My Grades tool. All of the assessments that the instructor has created and made available to students, the student will be able to go to My Grades and see their progress. So because I just submitted these two items, on the My Grades screen, I can see here's my assignment that I submitted in the date and time that I did that, and also the needs grading status indicator. Same thing for test number one. I can see the date and time when I submitted that and that it's pending grading. The student can actually come along here and click on the links that they see to see the actual content that they submitted. All right? And when they have a grade available, that'll, that will be available to them in the grade panel to the right. So that leads me to the grading function, but before I leave student preview mode, I just want to make sure I'm saving my student preview user's information, and that's going to actually add that student preview user to my grade center so I can do the next step. Okay, And you could do this too if you want to play with your assignments a little bit and make sure that the settings are correct, and also um, Try out calculations in the Grade Center to make sure your calculations are correct. This is a really good tool for you to adapt to make sure everything is accurate and organized. Okay, so I'm going to exit student preview mode. And that will take me back to my course as instructor. I can see all of my editing tools are now available to me again. So now that I have a good example of work that students have submitted, I can show you the grading uh, workflows. So I'm going to click on this little arrow to the right of the Grade Center just to hop right into the Grade Center and show you a preview of what this looks like. So when you're in the full Grade Center and you have students, you're going to see a table with student names, first name, and then columns for the assessments you've created. Now anything that you have pending grading is going to have this little yellow needs grading indicator. Anything students have not completed is going to be blank. And if you have any questions about the icons you see in the Full Grade Center, click on Icon Legend. That will tell you what the various icons mean. If you see a blue Attempt in, in Progress indicator, that means a student has begun an assessment but hasn't submitted it yet. So that means either they're actively working on something or something in draft status. Okay? All right. So. I'm going to also show you the needs grading smart view. So back in the course tools area here, or the control panel, if you click on Grade Center, you'll see a drop down menu with all these different choices. Right now we're currently looking at the full Grade Center. If I wanted to get into a grading workflow to begin grading students, I can grading. And it gives me a list of everything in the course that is pending grading. And if I wanted to filter this down just to grade ver certain things, I can use this filter menu. If you don't see the filter menu, click on filter on the, the far right, and you'll get a filter menu where you can filter down just the, t the assessments you wanted to grade at that moment, and that will sort down your list a little bit. Okay, so let's say I just want to grade my lesson map assignments. Anybody who has submitted this assignment will show up in my list. And then I can click Grade All, and that will take me into a grading workflow where I can see the document the student has submitted, and I can assign a score here on the far right. So if, I, if I'm happy with what I see here, if this all meets my criteria, I can put in 10 points. I can put in some additional feedback. Like so. Now, if there's additional things I wanted to add to my feedback, I can click the plus button here. And there's, I can attach files. I can also attach videos and other types of media to that feedback. Okay. If I click on the content editor tool here, that's going to give me even more tools. 
to format my feedback. Okay. So you have options for how you want to manage uh, adding the feedback into the feedback to learner box. And once you are done grading the student, you can click submit and that will add that grade to the grade center. Okay, so let me show you what that looks like. Once the student is scored, that score just appears right here like so. Okay, now I'm going to go back here and I'm going to grade um, test one. So when I'm looking at the test, I can see here's all the questions and I'm only seeing this test in my grade, my needs grading list because of that essay. If this was just a test that only had multiple choice, true, false, and other objective type questions, I wouldn't have to come in here and grade. Okay. okay. All right, so I'm grading the essay and let's say that the student got maybe four points. Uh, like that. So this is the individual feedback for this particular student's response on the essay. And I'm giving them four points out of five on that essay question. And then I'll click submit and that will post the grade to the grade center. Like so. Was there a question about the workflows? I did have a question about when you were grading the assignment, not so much the test, but when you were grading the assignment. Mm -hmm. um, if, if, if it's like a complex form that has various parts to it, I was using the little legend where you get the little bubble feedback. Is that recommended? Does the student is able to see that? I, I never know how that actually works on the student side. Like Are yeah, you you feel, about yeah, this? a little legend on top, yeah, the black, little, yeah, like using the little bubble chat, little um, go back up there, mm -hmm. next to the little T, yeah, there. Like if there's parts to the actual assignment where I want to critique, maybe like where it says, I don't know, one of the headings there, you just kind of insert a little comment right next to it. So what you're seeing here is the annotation tool. You can annotate right on top of the document preview that yeah. you're seeing when uh, you are grading the assignment. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to add comments to the tool, you can, or the document, you can click on comment and start clicking around. Like if I wanted to add the comment right here, that's where the little mm -hmm. bubble appears. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I've used it, but like I just that. don't know if the student was. So when the student opens it up, they're able to see those side notes right next to it. Yes. Did they so have once to click you... the little comments um, to see it, or is it visible like it's like you're seeing on the screen right now? We can take a look at that. Comments. Yeah. Yeah, we can take a look at that once I have a couple more little things here. So I'll circle something. Let's say that I want to put a stamp on here. I can put that. There's a lot of the cool tools here you can use with the annotation. Uh -huh. All right, so let's say that um, also I can highlight, I'm going to just highlight this and add a comment just to that piece. Okay, okay so here's some of the some example feedback. I got two types of comments, some drawn annotation and a stamp. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure that I am saving this, submit it, that will update. And now I'm going to go toggle into student preview mode again to see what that mm -hmm. looks like. So I'm going to go here and then go to my grades and see how on the lesson template assignment, there's a little comment bubble here. Mm -hmm. There's feedback that, that comes from that learner to, uh, feedback to learner area, but if they actually click on their assignment, they're going to see everything I put here. Okay, okay, okay. I like that. Yeah. And Thank then you. if they want to, they can download um, this file to a PDF, and then all of that commentary comes over in the PDF. Okay. Oh, thank you. That's how helpful mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. That's a really nice tool that I think that was recently um, 
I think we got BB annotate last year, so like either mid semester, sometime mid, mid semester we got BB annotate. But yeah, that's that's a really cool tool. Okay, so the last piece of this I wanted to talk about grade center organization. So when you're in the full grade center, um, there are tools in here to help you um, organize the grade center and um, make things a little bit more clear and also to check the accuracy of your information. So um, any column that is associated with content in your course menu, when you click on the head of the column's gray button, um, you're not going to see the option to delete that column because of that connection. If there was a column in here that did, that showed you the option to delete, you know that that is a standalone column unrelated to assessments out in your course menu. Okay. Other things to note here, um, at the top of the column, if you click on the little gray button and go to Quick Column Information, that's going to give you a quick snapshot of everything you need to know about this column. You can know that it's primary display set to score, its category is assignment, what its point possible is, the due date, if it's included in calculations, all that good stuff. Okay. Um, other thing to note, um, if you wanted to reorganize the order of the columns, if you go to manage, column organization, this is a screen that's going to show you every single column you have in your grade center. And if you wanted to reorganize the order of the columns, let's say that I don't want attendance at the top, I want it at the bottom or the end of the grade center, I could just click and drag that. And let's say that I want, um, maybe I want test one before lesson map template assignment. If I wanted to recategorize my columns, let's say that I don't want a category associated with attendance. Let's say I want to take it out. So I'll check on that checkbox and then go to change category two and set that to no category. Okay. And you can also choose to hide columns. So let's say that I don't want students to see attendance. Um, what I could do actually is before I get that far, I want to make a point about something. Hold on. So you see how there's this little indicator at the top of this column, this little um, gray dot with a red slash? That's the hidden from students indicator. Column not visible to users. So I can still see it as the instructor, but students can't see it when they go to my grades. If you don't want this column um, included in calculations, I recommend going to the edit column information area of the column and making sure everything under options is set to no. No, no, and no. So no to include this column in grade center calculations, no to show this column to students, and no to show statistics. That's going to make sure that this column basically doesn't show up in anything. You have it there as a reference, but students aren't going to see it and it's not going to get reflected in, in your total or weighted total calculations. And if you don't want to see a column when you're looking at it in my grades, if you click the down arrow, go to hide from instructor view, that's going to banish it basically to that back end of the column organization page. Now here's the reverse of that. Let's say that you thought you hit a column but students are still seeing it in my grades. So you do the reverse to troubleshoot it. So you'd go to manage column organization and start looking for hidden columns. So let's say my students are complaining that they're seeing an attendance column, but I, I don't know where that is when I'm looking at the full grade center. I don't see any attendance column. So if I go to manage column organization and I start looking for something that's grayed out and has the word hidden, I know that that possibly is what's causing the issue. So if I click on the little checkbox, I can go to show high and select show. Then I can see that it's there. And then if I if this is something that I definitely don't need and it prevents me the option to delete it, I can go to that context menu and delete it. Okay. All right. So let me go back to my slides just to make sure that we covered what we needed to cover. Lisa, did you have a question? Yes, I, you might have gone over this already, but last night I was looking at my Blackboard Grade Center and I noticed that I had a lot of 
columns that I must have archived these courses and then brought imported them with all the grade center information. One of my classes, I was able to delete the column, but the other three classes, I could not delete the column. I saw no delete button. What am I doing incorrectly? So the first thing I would check is to make sure you don't actually have duplicates of those assessments out in your course menu. So um, let's say, let's pretend that, um, here, I'm just going to create, I'm going to create another lesson, a template assessment here. I'm just going to create another assessment that I, to create another assignment just to demonstrate. Okay, so I have two of basically the same assessment, right? And I'm seeing, I'm going to see basically two of the same type of column. And if I click on the down arrow, I'm not seeing a deletion option, right? So to clean this up, for the first thing I would do to troubleshoot is to look in my course menu to see is there a duplicate assignment somewhere and in this case there is and I could just go ahead and delete that and because there are no attempts associated with this the column will delete so you see how that second column for lesson map template assignment is now gone so that was that would be the first thing I would check to see if there's any content in the course menu that's associated with that column. Now, if there the, isn't... I have a question. Should you uh -huh. delete it in the assignments where they where they originate or sh or can you also um, you know manage it from the gradebook column? So if it's an assessment that's out in your course menu you have to actually go to that location in the course and delete it there. Mm -hmm. So if let's say I didn't want test one anymore, mm -hmm. I can't delete it here because of that connection to something that's out here in the course menu. If I were to go ahead and delete test one from here, I'm going to get a warning because students have attempts on it. I uh -huh. can preserve the scores so it, it could keep the column but delete the test or I can delete both. Uh -huh. So I'm going to delete both and click remove. So that will do is now test one is no longer a part of my grade center. Okay. And and just a, a, a side question to that question. If you change like a due date, which is an available option from the column, do you have mm -hmm. to go to the original assignment to change it there or can you do it from the column? You could do it from either. So oh, okay. let's say that I'm going to go here and I'm going to make this actually due on the 28th. All right, so I can see in my quick information now that due date is the 28th. And I'm just going to go out to the Grade Center and just confirm, or the, the course, and just confirm that. It should just be pulling the same information. Yep. Yep, so you could do it either way. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Megan? Um, was there another? Yep. Yeah. It, it was not an assignment. What I have is from when I took Blackboard, Advanced Blackboard, I made a lot of different kinds of assignments that I don't use, and I put them in the PMO. Well, I didn't get rid of them in the PMO when I created my classes for the semester. So I brought everything over. So they're showing up, but it's not something I would ever give to my students. Okay, so you're saying the assignments came over from the yes. PMO into the semester course? Yes. Are you able to delete them from the course menu? No. One class I could. One class I saw a delete button, but the other classes there wasn't a delete button. Hmm. Okay, we'll have to have a conversation after the, the meeting. If you could send me an email with the ID of the course and the names of the assessment columns in question, then we can investigate a little bit more. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me go back to my slides. Because um, we're getting close, close to the top of the hour here. I just want to make sure I covered everything. Yep, so...
just want to go over the conclusion side. Okay. So my conclusion to the demonstration to uh, follow some best practice tips um, to eliminate surprises or uncertainty, I definitely recommend using your student preview mode because that will give you um, a confirmation that the assignments are available the way you expect and you'll know exactly how students are going to complete them and how they're going to work when you grade them in the Grade Center because you can actually use your student preview mode to go over all the entire process, right? And then accessing grades, make sure you always remember instructors go through the Grade Center link in the control panel, students go through the My Grades tool. So if you click on My Grades and are surprised that you're not seeing your assessments, you have to go through the Grade Center so that you can grade. Okay. Okay. So with the last remaining minutes, we have a little bit more time for questions. So are there any anything else that you needed to know or are curious about? Megan, I was wondering if someone could do the same kind of thing with um, using Nomia, the um, quizzing option and the um, assignment option with the videos because I'm using it quite a bit and I like it but there's little annoying things that I know if I had someone to tell me how to do it it would make things easier for me if that would be possible at some point. Are you asking about creating assignments with Nomia? Well you can you can create the assignment you can just assign them to watch the video um, mm -hmm. And then it's graded based on the amount of the video that they watch, or you can put a quiz within it. Um, mm -hmm. But there's just little annoying things as I'm using Nomia that if I had like another, just someone to do a tutorial like this, to just go through it, because um, I'm kind of learning on my own as I go, but it's frustrating. Yep, we're going to be having some Nomia trainings in February. So if you want to refer to the uh, webinar list, the w webinar schedule, I'll post that in the chat. Erin and Danica are going to be hosting that. So Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, was there anything else? We got five minutes. Did I go over anything that was a little too quick that you needed a quick rehash of, or is there anything like? I did an assignment. We, we do have an assignment in in the nursing program. It's like a little bit of review of arithmetic and vacation dosing calculation questions. So when when I entered the assignment, I gave feedback. Um, but now, do I have to give students? instructions to go back and review those or do they automatically have access to that once it's graded? Once they are graded, students should be able to go to my grades and review their scores. Right. Um, if you need to give them a little bit of instruction on how to mm -hmm. go over their assignment scores, mm -hmm. I'm going to, uh, I'll post some instructions here in the in the chat for you. You can share this resource with students. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So the student support website has a lot of nice tutorials and step-by-step uh, -step, um, guiding videos. Um, so I recommend that they look at the part about the MyGrades tool and how to uh, verify that their assignment's been submitted and look at their feedback. Awesome, thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if there's no other questions, we can adjourn early. Megan, um, I was under the impression that there was a part two to the um, session that we had on smart proctoring. Um, I did attend that and I have the recordings now, but I, was there part two or did I miss something? Okay. Nope, there was just the, the one session. Um, we can ask our smarter proctoring guide to provide some additional training sessions or if you have some questions I could refer them I could you send them to me and I could ask Sean to re to respond to them oh, okay all right no I was just maybe I, I thought there was a part two to the first 
uh, presentation, but I'm good so far. <laughs> okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Megan, when I'm in um, the column organization, manage column organization view, um, there's the whole column there that says not in a grading period. What does that mean, and should it have a grading period? You can ignore that. Um, that's generally used if we were grading by quarter. So there's a way to create grading periods in Blackboard and associate columns with grading periods. But for the most part, our college doesn't use that. And it's OK to ignore that. OK. Yep, you are welcome. OK, so if there's no other questions, I'm just checking the chat real quick. Nope. OK, so we will take off early. And um, I will try to splice the two videos that we've created here through our recordings together and make that available later. OK, bye, everyone. Thank you.